This video is going to look at thirds. Most numbers we meet in everyday life are rational. That is, they can be written as fractions. That's a division of two numbers. The numbers involved are integers, that is, whole numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And they're negatives, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 and so on. So rational numbers can be written as fractions. Irrational numbers cannot be written as fractions. The number pi, which is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, is an irrational number. If you see pi is a decimal, it's non-terminating, that is the figures go on forever after the decimal point, and it's non-recurring, that is there's no pattern to the numbers after the decimal point. So it's a non-terminating, non-recurring, in decimal form. So it can't be written as a fraction, it can't be written as a decimal. Other places you'll have met irrational numbers is in Pythagoras' theorem. Most roots are irrational. Not all, most. So for example, square root 2 is irrational. Can't be written as a fraction. Can't be written exactly as a decimal. Can only be approximated. Root 5 ninths, cube root 16 and so on. So any root, square root, cube root, fourth root, whatever, which is irrational, that is, it can't be written as a, de as a fraction or as a decimal. Any irrational root like that is a third. Now, some roots are not thirds. So, for example, root 25 is not a third because it's exactly 5. So as a fraction, 5 over 1, 10 over 2, 15 over 3, etc. It can be written as a fraction. Root 4 ninths is exactly 2 thirds. Cube root negative 8 is exactly negative 2. Negative 2 written as a fraction, negative 2 over 1, negative 4 over 2, negative 6 over 3, and so on. So these roots can be written as fractions. They are rational. So these roots here are rational. They're not thirds. Most roots, like these ones, are irrational. And roots like that are thirds. There's rules for all roots. If you've got a root of a product, this is one number m times another number n, you can split the root up. So root m times n is root m times root n. You can split up a division in the same way. This is m divided by n, and then root it. Well, you can do root m divided by root n. So you can split the root over a multiplication, a product, or over a division, a quotient. So here's an example. Root 6 times root 3 is the root of 6 times 3. That's its root 18. That's using this rule from right to left. Equally, you could write root 18 as root 9 times root 2. That's using the rule left to right here. And the square root of 9 is not a third, because that's exactly 3. So this is 3 times root 2. For short form, we can simply write 3 root 2. So 3 times root 2 is written in short form 3 root 2. It means you're multiplying 3 in the root 2. Here's root of 5 ninths. Using this rule here, we can split the root up over the top and the bottom to be root 5 over root 9. Root 9 is exactly 3. So when a number's not a third, like root 9, you can write down its exact value. These thirds have been simplified. Here's a general rule for simplifying thirds. Write the sub as a product of the two roots where one of these numbers, m or n, is a square number. That means like here, 4, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6. So these numbers are square numbers. That means we can square root them. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4. So dealing with square roots, which is mostly what we deal with, we've got the square root of 72, Try and write it as 
a product of two factors where one of the factors is a square number, like it could be square root 4 times square root 18, 4 18 or 72. Or it could be square root 9 times square root 8, because 9 8s are 72. Or square root 36 times square root 2, because 36 times 2 makes 72, and we use the biggest square number possible, which is 36. 72 is 36 times 2. So root 72 is root 36 times root 2, and root 36 is 6. 6 times root 2 is written 6 root 2. So we look for a factor of 72, which is a square number, one of these numbers in red, and we get the biggest one we can, which is 36. If you use 4 or 9, it wouldn't be fully simplified. 36 is to fully simplify the sub. So whenever you get a sub and it will simplify, in this way, you look for the biggest square number that's a factor of 72 and use it. So here's 200, root 200. Biggest square number that's a factor is 100. Now, it could be four fifties, it can be eight twenty-fives, but we want 100 times two. The biggest square number goes into 200 is 100. Square root of 100 is 10, it's 10 root 2. So the biggest square number that goes into 200 is a 100. 4 and 25 would simplify it, but not fully simplify it. You can add, subtract, sub, providing they are the same sub. So root 2 will simplify with other root 2s when you add or subtract root 3s with other root 3s, root 5s with other root 5s, and so on. Now we just made square root 100 was 10 root 2, and root 72 is 6 root 2, so this is 10 root 2, take away 6 root 2, which is going to be 4 root 2. It's like 10 apples, take away 6 apples, is 4 apples. So the answer is going to be 4 root 2. Now this is going to show you why it works. If we take root 2 out as a common factor, it leaves behind the brackets 10 minus 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. So it's 4 times root 2, which is 4 root 2. So the reason it works is it factorises with common factor root 2. That's the same reason you can have 10x minus 6x giving you 4x. x is a common factor. So that's why things like that Simplify because I've got a common factor. So 10 root 2, take away 6 root 2, state to the answer 4 root 2. But it comes through factorising. For that reason, 2 root 3 plus 3 root 2 would not simplify because there's no common factor. They're different subs, one's root 3 and one's root 2. So root 3s will simplify with other root 3s. Root 2s will simplify with other root 2s, but they won't simplify with each other. So that doesn't simplify, that has to just sit as it is. So that's adding and subtracting multiples of the same sub, the same root. However, you can multiply, you can multiply a root with a root. So here's root 3 times root 5 is root 15. You can multiply a non-root with a non-root. So 3 or multiply with 5 to give you 15. However, when you've got a non-root and a root, they won't combine. You just set them together. You simply miss out the multiplication sign and write them in short form as here, 3 root 5. So they have not combined. They've just been written in a shorter form. The multiplication sign missed out. This is like oil and water. They don't combine. They sit in separate layers. You put oil and water together, they sit in two layers. The oil layer above the water layer. That's what happens here. The non-root just sits together with the root, but they're separate. So you can't combine them, you can only write them together in separate layers as it were. So here is multiplying subs. You can multiply the 2 and the 3 to get 6. You can multiply the root 3 and the root 5 to get root 15. And that will give you the answer. Here's how it splits. The 2 and the 3 go together. They are non-root with non-root. 
the root 3 and the root 5 go together, that's the roots with the roots, and you can then say 2 times 3 is 6, the root 3 times root 5 is root 15, and it's done. You really don't need that line there. 2 times 3 is 6, and root 3 times root 5 is root 15. Similarly, this one, 2 times 3 here, the non-root times the non-root, that gives you 6. And then the root 5 times the root 5, which is root 25, which is 5. So you're actually squaring square root 5. So if you square square root 5, you just get 5. So root 5 times root 5 is 5. And then it's 2 times the 3 as well. That gives you 30. So basically, you have the root 5 multiplying the root 5 to give you the 5 here. And you have the root 3 and the root 5 to give you the root 15. And the 2 times 3 giving you 6. But you don't need the in-between lines. You can actually go uh, straight through to the answer. Or here, having the root 5 times root 5 giving you 5. As long as you remember, non-root times non-root. And the root times the root. And keep them separate from each other. When we break brackets, single brackets here, we multiply away the brackets. So we're going to multiply 2 root 3 and root 3. So this is just actually multiplication. 2 root 3 times root 3. And then the 2 root 3 times the 3. So 2 root 3 times root 3 is 2 times 3, which is 6. Again, you don't need all the work in there. It's just to say root 3 times root 3 is 3 times that 2 is 6. So as long as you get to that 6, and there's then 2 root 3 times this, 3. That's quite straightforward. You can do the black 2 here, times that black 3. The non-root here, times the non-root. But they don't combine with each other. You don't combine the root 3 with the, the 6. They sit separately. So Breaking the brackets, you've got 2 root 3 times root 3 is 6, and 2 root 3 times 3 is 6 root 3. That's the brackets broken. The non-root times the non-root, that's the 2 times the 3 giving us 6. That's a bit to watch. So it's root times root, non-root times non-root. Same double brackets here. We're multiplying root 3 minus root 2 by itself, squaring it. So we'll write it twice. As in algebra, when breaking brackets, it's going to be easier probably to throw out a wee square grid where you make the multiplications. Because what we want to do is root 3 has to multiply this root 3. This root 3 also has to multiply this negative root 2. This negative root 2 has to multiply that root 3. And that negative root 2 has to multiply this negative root 2. That's the combinations. So, that pair that pair, and then that pair, and that pair. And it's easier in this rectangle to do that. I should be just done at the side out of the road. Root 3 times this root 3 is root 9, which is 3. This root 3 multiplies this negative root 2. That gives you negative root 6. So that's the first pair, root 3 times root 3 root 3 times this negative root 2, and then negative root 2 times root 3, here it is here, that gives you negative root 6, and then negative root 2 times negative root 2, that's this one in here, that gives you positive root 4, which is 2. So that's it, root 3 minus root 2, and that's root 3 minus root 2, and you make each combination, simplify it, 3 and 2 here gives you 5, Negative root 6 minus root 6, well that's negative 2 root 6. Now it doesn't matter how you get 5 minus 2 root 6, this is just one method. There are lots of methods actually. Uh, whatever method you use doesn't matter, it's done out the road at the side. We've got 5 minus 2 root 6 as the answer, it doesn't matter how you get there. This is root 3 minus 2. So you notice know, that's root 3 minus root 2. This is root 3 minus 2. Being squared, it's multiplied by itself. 
and there's the rectangle set up, root 3 minus 2 and root 3 minus 2. Get the combinations, root 3 times root 3, root 3 times this negative 2, excuse me, that's negative 2 and root 3 here, so it's non-root and root just sit with each other. Down here, negative 2 times root 3 there, that's negative 2 root 3 as well. And negative 2 and negative 2 multiply to give you positive 4. Here we've got 3 and 4, 7. Here we've got subs negative 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3 is minus 4 root 3. So it's 7 minus 4 root 3. Again, it doesn't matter how you break these brackets up. This is one method. Different methods as long as you get to this answer. Now these are compound subs. We've got combination of different subs being added or subtracted and here in the brackets we've got a sub and a non-sub being subtracted so when you've got two different uh, subs or a sub and a non-sub being added or subtracted that's a compound sub so it's a compound sub and if you switch the sign between the brackets here that's a minus and that's a plus that's known as a conjugate. So that's a sub root 3 minus 2, and that's its conjugate, root 3 plus 2. So each other's conjugate. When the signs just differ between the two terms here, what's going to happen is the subs are going to cancel out, and the answer will have no subs. That is, the answer will be rational. There will be no subs involved. So here's the arrangement with the rectangles. Here's the root 3 minus 2 first brackets and root 3 plus 2 the second brackets. Multiply root 3 and root 3. Multiply the root 3 in this minus 2. Multiply the root 3 in this positive 2. Multiply this negative 2 in this positive 2. And you'll get negative 4. Notice that's minus 2 root 3. That's plus 2 root 3. They add to cancel. They give you 0. And all you've got is 3 minus 4 which is negative 1. The answer to that is negative 1. That's what you get when you break the brackets up. And there's no subs in the answer, so it's a rational answer. So if you conjugate subs and you multiply them, you get a rational answer. When you use that in the fractions, rationalising denominators, So if you have a fraction, it's got a numerator on the top, a denominator on the bottom, and if the denominator on the bottom has a sub on it, that's an irrational number. That's an irrational denominator. If we want to rationalise the denominator, it means get rid of the sub from the bottom line. It's quite simple. It's got a root 6 in the bottom. Multiply top and bottom by root 6, and you get an equivalent fraction. As long as you multiply the bottom and the top of the fraction by the same thing, you get a, an equivalent fraction. The bottom root 6 times root 6 is 6. And the top is just 4 times root 6. So you just write that as 4 root 6. We've now got 4 sixths here. So the non root 4 and the non root 6, they will simplify. Both divide by 2. It simplifies to 2 thirds here. So that's had a sub in the bottom, a denominator with a sub. The denominator now has no subs on it. That's a rational number three. So the denominator was was irrational. It's now rational. We've rationalised the denominator. Here's root two over three. That means you can split the root. Root two over root three. It's got root three in the bottom. To get rid of it, multiply it top and bottom by root three. In the bottom, root three times root three is three. The top, root two times root three is root six. It's now got a rational denominator. This is 1 over 2 root 3. The sub in the bottom is 2 root 3. It's irrational because it's got a sub. That's a root 3 part. That's the sub. So we want rid of that root 3 times top and bottom of root 3. The top is obviously 1 times root 3 is root 3. The bottom, root 3 times root 3. That's 3. Times that 2 gives you 6. So that's root 3 over 6. It's now got a rational denominator. So that's the commonest type. To get rid of the sub in the bottom line, that's rationalised the denominator. You just multiply top and bottom by that sub. 
last and have this case, this is a compound sub down the bottom, to get rid of it, multiply by the conjugate, that is change that plus into a minus, and multiply top and bottom by that compound sub, root 3 minus 2. That root 3 plus 2 and root 3 minus 2 in the bottom line, that's that result. It comes out at negative 1. So, using that previous result, the bottom lines become negative 1. Top line is root 3 minus 2. When you divide everything at the top by negative 1, that switches the signs. Positive root 3 becomes negative root 3. Minus 2 becomes plus 2. So it becomes negative root 3 plus 2, which we usually write as 2 minus root 3. In other words, multiplying by dividing by negative, you could just switch the subtraction here. So that's rationalising the denominator using a conjugate sub. If you click the link in the description that accompanies the video, you'll get access to a worksheet which practices simplifying subs, multiplying subs, adding subtracting subs, simplifying first and then adding subtracting, breaking up the brackets, single brackets, double brackets, rationalised denominators with just a sub in the bottom, or a compound sub in the bottom. And the worksheet has with it all the answers. If you also click the link in the description, you get access to a set of notes on subs, covering the video. The next videos will be on indices, they're also in the notes. So, hope you found this video useful. Thank you.